Previously, we saw that the biceps brachii is a muscle in the anterior aspect of the arm, and that the biceps brachii goes from the scapula all the way down to the radius bone. Since the biceps brachii is in the anterior aspect of the arm, and it crosses the shoulder joint and the elbow joint, when the biceps brachii contracts, it can flex at the elbow and also flex at the shoulder because it crosses both joints. We know that we can flex our forearm and that we can also extend our forearm. And extension is the opposite movement of flexion. Now, for us to be able to extend our forearm, the muscle needs to be in the opposite side of the biceps brachii. So if the biceps brachii was anterior to the humerus, is in the anterior aspect of the arm, the muscle that will cause the opposite movement needs to be in the posterior aspect of the arm. Also, for this muscle to be able to extend my forearm, this muscle needs to attach to a bone in the forearm. This muscle needs to cross the elbow joint, the same joint that the biceps brachii crossed to cause flexion. And when we look at the skeletal muscles in our body, what we see is that they work in pairs. If we have one muscle or group of muscles causing flexion, we will have a muscle or group of muscles causing extension. Now, the main muscle that causes a specific movement is called the agonist, also called prime mover. The muscle that causes the opposite movement is called antagonist. Now, in our body, we know that we have more than one muscle capable of causing the same movement. And the muscles that are capable of causing the same movement, but they are not the agonist, the main muscle, they are called the synergist muscles. Based on our example of flexion at the elbow joint, can you tell me what would be the agonist muscle? The agonist is the biceps brachii muscle. Can you tell me what would be the antagonist muscle? What is the muscle that is causing the opposite movement that the biceps brachii caused? That would be the triceps brachii muscle. Now, the synergist muscles are the muscles that will be helping the agonist, the biceps brachii, to cause flexion at the elbow. And these helpers must be crossing the elbow joint to be able to cause flexion at the elbow like the biceps brachii does. And these synergist muscles that help the biceps brachii are the brachialis and the brachioradialis muscles. So for flexion at the elbow joint, the agonist is the biceps brachii muscle. The synergist muscles, the little helpers, are the brachialis and the brachioradialis. And the antagonist, the muscle that does the opposite movement of flexion, which is extension, is the triceps brachii muscle. Now, if you're talking about extension at the elbow joint, can you tell me which is the muscle that is considered the agonist? If you're talking about extension at the elbow joint, now the agonist will be the triceps brachii muscle. Because the triceps brachii muscle is the main muscle, the prime mover, causing extension at the elbow joint. And the antagonist, the muscle that's causing the opposite movement of extension, will be the biceps brachii muscle. So you always need to remember our muscles work in pairs and you need to take into consideration the movement in question to be able to correctly say the agonist, antagonist, and synergist muscles. And with this, we finish this lecture. I really need you to come with all this knowledge to our class because we will be going over several skeletal muscles and skeletal muscle groups we have in our body and their movements in the classroom together. So get ready for lots of movement and fun. See you in class. Bye.